Hey, it's Kevin Tov with GigaOM. I have in hand here an Acer W510 Windows 8 tablet in a keyboard dock. We're going to take a look at this because I've been talking about three different types of mobile devices running Windows 8 these days. You've got your Surface Pro and Windows 8 Pro devices that start around $900 and up. You've got your Microsoft Surface and Windows RT devices that start around $499 and up. And then you've got this middle ground that I think kind of gets rid of the need for devices like these, and I'll explain why in a minute. This is an Intel Atom based device, very similar to the netbooks of old, well they're not that old, maybe three four years ago, and it also runs Windows 8, has the Metro or what used to be called Metro interface, touch screen, has a keyboard dock, and it, I mean for all intents and purposes you get the Windows RT experience, but you also get full Windows 8 in the desktop and you get that for about the same price as a Windows RT device. This right here, I'll go through all the specifications, but this is $599 for this particular tablet, which is $100 more than the Surface, and uh, Surface RT, I should say, and there's a keyboard dock as well. So really, there's a nice middle ground here. Let me take you on a quick hardware tour. In fact, what I'll do first is take the device out of the dock and explain what this is. All right, let me go back here. We've got a capacitive home button right on the front. So you've got Windows 8 here. Uh, again, Metro interface running an Intel Atom. It's a dual core Intel Atom, uh, 1.8 gigahertz. There's two uh, gigabytes of RAM in here, and this is a 64 gig uh, of storage in here, uh, as opposed to the RT, Surface RT, I think I have 32 in there. To bump up the RT unit to 64 gig, get you close to the same price as this. That's again why I'm saying maybe there's not as much need for RT due to these devices. You're getting the best of both worlds anyway. So, we've got a 10.1 inch touchscreen, 1366 by 768. I have to give some credit to Acer that are using an IPS display that looks really good from all angles. Don't know how well you can see it, but I've been very impressed. Top, side, bottom, everything. Um, in the past, I've been critical of Acer because their design has been kind of so-so in terms of build quality, not that great. Now, this is uh, mostly plasticky, but it's still relatively solid. I mean, it's not, it's not as bad as they've been in the past, I should say. Uh, let's see what we've got. We've got a front-facing video camera here. We've got that capacitive Windows touch button right here, so if I tap that, it'll bring me back to wherever I was here. Um, we've got slide-in gestures off the side, just like any other Windows 8 device. Um, the beauty of this is, I've got my touch interface, but here, look at this, I've got Chrome on here. Again, because I've got full Windows 8. So if I go to my desktop, which is right here, I've got Chrome with a couple tabs. So, you know, I can sit in Chrome portrait mode and just read, do whatever. I really like that. Let's go back here, finish up our tour around the device. On the bottom, you just have two little holes that are clamps for the dock. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got a proprietary charging port here. It's like a 30 pin. I'm not a fan of that, but, um, well, what can you do? On the right hand side, there's a speaker here. We've got a micro SD card slot, so you can add up to another 64 gigabytes of memory, I believe. You've got a uh, micro USB, a small HDMI port, so you can output to, say, an HDTV or a digital monitor. Uh, volume up and down here. I don't know if there's anything on screen that shows it. Yeah, up to the top right. So we've got that going. Um, there's a small microphone port here, and that is the right-hand side. Up top, we've got the power button. We've got a screen orientation lock, and we've got a um, headphone jack right here. Nothing else. Left-hand side's pretty barren. There's just the other speaker. We've got speakers left and speaker right. So on the back side, we've got an 8 megapixel camera along with flash, LED flash, and a microphone port there. And there's also NFC built in. I guess that's where it is. I haven't tried that yet. Um, I've been using this for a couple days certainly have a full review up after a couple more days of use. But, so that's a quick look at the tablet part of it. Again, a 10.1 inch tablet in terms of thickness. Uh, let me just grab the Surface RT, put that underneath, and you'll see they're about the same. The Acer model may be slightly, slightly thinner. So, lightweight as expected. Now, let's take a look at the keyboard dock because this adds some weight. When you put this whole bit together, you're probably looking at three, three and a half pounds. 
but you're getting some benefit here, a couple benefits, and I'll explain those in a second. Let me first put the tablet in the dock. It just snaps in. That's it. It's clamped in. It's not going anywhere. To release it, there's a button right here so I can take that out, just like so. Put it in tablet mode. You'll see you've got that 30-pin connector right in there. That's what's attaching the keyboard to the display. The reason you need that is because you've got a battery in here that runs for approximately nine hours. I've actually gotten a little bit longer on that. And then inside this keyboard dock is another battery. Acer says you can run for 18 hours if you have the dock and the tablet. I haven't gone that far with it, but I'll tell you what, all day and then some, without a doubt. It's, uh, it's been quite good, especially when you've got that dock. The battery life's been really good. So on the left side of the dock, you've got a, that 30 pin connector for charging that would charge the battery here. Um, the, I believe the tablet does not charge unless it is off when it's in the dock, so it's not going to run constantly. The, the base of the dock recharges the tablet as I understand it. Uh, front side, there's nothing there. Right side, you've got the single USB port here. That's the only full-size port uh, for USB on this device. So if you want that, you're not going to get it on the tablet. You're going to get it right here. Uh, let's see, nothing else on the bottom or anything like that. Keys, it's a little cramped. I mean, you think about it, you've got a 10.1 inch tablet. That's 10.1 inches diagonally. So when you consider that this is 10.1, this is not going to be a full experience in terms of typing size. I would equate it to about an 85% sized keyboard. Again, it reminds me of a netbook. It reminds me of a more modern day netbook with a slightly better Intel Atom um, and the fact that you can take this touchscreen tablet or display off and, and use it as a tablet. Trackpad's a little bit small. Um, I've also had a couple issues of the pointer jumping around for me. I'm not crazy about that. Um, could just be me. I've read some reports of other people having the same issues, however. And again, you do have a touch screen here, so you can certainly navigate on here through through touch without using the, um, the trackpad for what that's worth. Um, you get a small shift key here to save some size. Trying to see where else maybe we've got some things. Well, everything else is pretty normal. You've got a Windows key here that will take you back to the start screen just as if you hit that capacitive button. So, uh, performance-wise, I mean, it's an Intel Atom. This is not a core processor. So if you're looking for like a true laptop slash desktop replacement, I wouldn't bother looking at one of these. You're going to have some compromise here. What you gain when you lose your performance is you're gaining incredible battery life. Basically, you're getting the same battery life potential here as a Surface RT or a Windows RT device on an ARM processor. So you're gaining uh, that type of battery life, but you're also gaining the Windows 8 desktop, which I think is very important because in Windows RT, all this is for just to run Office. Here I can actually install apps, I can run Netflix, um, I, obviously I install Google Chrome, um, I can browse using Internet Explorer 10 if I want to. Um, whatever you want to use, any Windows 8 compatible device can be installed on here. That is a big, big difference from Windows RT and, and a difference that I actually like. Uh, let's see, what else can I show you here? So I showed you Chrome. Um, you know, I can certainly use IE uh, in the old, uh, not old, but what used to be called Metro as well. I mean, works perfectly well performance-wise. Again, this isn't going to be a laptop desktop replacement. It's going to be something that you want to take with you all day and use Basically for, for, you know, email, browsing, Facebook, maybe some Netflix, um, you can certainly run probably any Windows 8 app on here, but would I put full-blown Photoshop on here and try and use that? Probably not. It's not going to be a good experience. That's not what this is for. I've seen a lot of people just bashing these types of devices, not this one in particular, but these Intel Atom-based devices, and you know what? They're, they're not desktop replacements. They're not... They give you the laptop experience, but at the cost of performance. You gain battery life, however. You can't compare them to, to something like that. I wouldn't compare this to a MacBook Air, for example. Um, I would compare it to the RT devices, though, because, again, at roughly the same price, uh, you know, I'd probably go with one of these myself. So, Joe Flacco won a little red Corvette. Very nice. Man, he got the 2014 Stingray already. Good for him. Um... That's pretty much all I can show you now until I spend a little bit more time with it. 
I haven't used the cameras at all. I have used this for writing blog posts, for consuming content. The fact that I can um, turn this thing all the way like that. I've actually put this down and used it to watch uh, Netflix like this on my lap. Obviously you can do the same by just putting it in regular laptop mode, but I found that to be quite impressive that it swings back all that way. I think that's fantastic and gives you like a presentation mode, I guess is what they call it. So that's quite good. And, uh, you know, just for sitting around, it's perfectly fine for, oops, I almost hit myself with it. It's perfectly fine for, um, you know, browsing the web, reading Kindle books, um, watching content, and anything else I can think of. So overall, I've been pretty happy with this for what it's intended for. Again, don't compare this to a true full laptop that's running on an Intel Core i5 or better. That's just not going to compete. So. Um, for what it's intended for, I really like it so far, and I'll have a quick follow-up with more impressions, likes, and dislikes in the very near future here on Gigom. Thanks.